pastor. What's going on? There's a pastor. Be seated. What's going on? The Baptist Church. The Baptist he says he wants the Holy Ghost. He's ready to have a new congregation. Whoa! He's ready to see the Holy Ghost move. language come up out of you. Go ahead. we get started guys those that follow me guess what i got the notes the notes are here i'm going to try to get it all in in one video i may have to do two forgive me if i sound a little echo type i'm here in my back porch um i don't have a microphone or anything so forgive me for that but what i showed you was a old clip of pastor rod parsley rod parsley is right in my city He's, uh, I can say a whole lot about him. I have experience with him. I've been to the church and all I know is thank God that he saved me from not uh, being enticed back when I first got saved to go to his Bible college that he had and getting involved with his church. I'll say that for a whole nother message, but Marcus Rogers, this is someone that he inspires these types of churches same types of messages is what he inspires to be like and as you can see here on this thumbnail he was at a recent event with pastor rob parsley and you see this is why this stuff is dangerous a lot of you followers out there that listen to him and look and i know you admire the man i know that you're going to attack me that's just fine but there's people out there that is newly subscribed to him or uh, they're searching for the Lord and they don't know and they don't, they're not sure about all of that and they need to be warned because I've been uh, uh, since I've started this channel I've seen several people including Marcus Rogers grow by the thousands and there's people that's deceived and they need to know and that's why there's channels like mine is just one of many of why we call these types of people out and I have here on my notes Three reasons. I, there's a ton of reasons why I can say Marcus Rogers church is false, that he's starting up a false church. There's a lot and I don't have time to, to go into all of it, but I'm picking out three that came to me as I was preparing this message. Number one, he keeps bad company. He keeps bad company. He has false prophets. As you can see in some of these thumbnails, he hangs around these types of people. And he hangs, he's got nationalist friends. 
One of the more famous ones, the hate preacher, Greg Locke. He always talks about when Greg Pastor Locke. Pastor Greg was, you know, doing the deliverance prayers. Hey, we were casting oh, devils This out. is beautiful to see, you know, Greg Locke also, uh, I think more in the Tennessee area, if I'm not mistaken. But um, they've been having revival. You know, people just lined up for miles. So and guess what? The chairs that's in this church, I believe Greg Locke gave him the chairs, delivered them somehow. Greg Locke is connected to the chairs within his church. And if you're not aware of Greg Locke, look right here. First and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. Three of you in the room right now. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil worshiping Satan. Bunch of devils. I'm sick of it. Hey, we want to talk about the insurrection. Mm. Let me tell you something. You ain't seen the insurrection yet. And as you can see, he's part of this with Greg Locke and all of the, 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 the chaos and, and, and all of this nationalism type stuff. And if you don't know what nationalism is, let me play you a few clips. So you can see where these people come from. That is precisely what we intend to do, is to impose Christian laws on everyone in the United States of America. That is what we have to do as Christians. We have to make sure that like the moon reflects the sun, the state reflects the church. We have to make sure that our normative laws and the laws that are passed by the government reflect the natural and the moral laws written by God. That is our job as Christians. Now, how? We are the Christian Taliban. This is, this is the era of Christian nationalism. Christian nationalism is on the rise and people are thirsty for it. They are hungry for this. And we are the Christian Taliban. And we will not stop until The Handmaid's Tale is a reality. And even worse than that, to be honest. Yes, we do have to start rolling back. The, there was this article from The Atlantic where it's like, well, Alito is on a mission to roll back the rights of, of women. To roll back the past hundred years of rights that were given to women. Yes. Yes, that is, that is what we're doing. And uh, it's only going to get worse for you from here. Because Marcus keeps, this is the thing. You associate yourself with these types of people. Scripture tells us about bad friends and having, uh, being connected to the wrong crowd. And of course, my computer don't want to work and connect with the Wi-Fi right now. So I can't read you off the verses about all of the bad friends at the moment. But I will put it in the description box, some verses so that you can see what Scripture tells us about the type uh, the company that we keep and how we have to be careful with that. So I have on here this bad company and him having these the friends, the bad company, which right leads to my number two point about Marcus Rogers, which shows that he has bad judgment. Bad company leads to, he has bad judgment. Why does I why am I saying he has bad judgment? For me, I'm I'm gonna keep beating this thing. Many of you know that for, for starters, that he promoted, he was part of the lie, the, the big lie, the election lie. He made a so-called, I don't know what, how his prediction thing went, but you know, he, he believes that all of the election lies, lies, all of the stolen stuff. But this is how we got to this place where this world is so crazy. It's because they beat many people down into compliance and Trump was the trumpet he was the example. He was the warning. Everything that they did to him, everything that they did to him, I don't care what nobody says. I know what I'm about to say is very controversial. Everything that they did, if you believe, and I can't even say what I really want to say, but I'm going to just look at this image. If you really believe everything's on the up and up, if you really believe that, especially now after everything that's happened, if you believe that everything was on the up and up that happened, 
and there's no scandal, there's no lying, there's no manipulation, there's no corruption. There's corruption on a level you couldn't even imagine. And he believes in that. Guess who else believes in that? All of the, a lot of his followers, a lot of you out there, a lot of his followers, Greg Locke is one of the main ones that hit the main media stream with his promoting this stuff. And Mar Marcus Rogers believe it. It shows bad judgment. It shows it because he was there on January the 6th. He was there. He made a video. He was live streaming, smiling, holding the camera in the crowd. He's long taken that video down. And he was there, which shows bad judgment. And he wants to be a pastor? This is who you want to lead you? Your children? Your family? Somebody that can't make the right judgments when it comes down to, I mean, serious matters. The man was in the military. And how dare him want to take part in trying to overthrow the government. And I have one here. This scripture stood out for me. I have a scripture that stood out. I'm going to give it to you. Proverbs 29, 12. And this is the New King James Version. It says on here that if a ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants will become wicked. Let me read that to you again. 29, 12. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants become wicked. You see, as a ruler of someone in charge, it's important that you're able to discern truth from error. Now, we know that during the election time stuff that many people told the leader at the time, Mr. Trump, you lost and stuff. You lost. But then there was others that were so afraid and they were hungry for the power as well. They wanted to stay in power. They went along with it. But after all of the court cases, all of these other things, all of this stuff and all of the so-called, all the failure, and, but he continues to promote the lie. And I guess the devil somehow magically has gained more power than the Lord. And he can somehow outsmart the Lord and trick, trick him and, and, and somehow he, he stole it somehow. I mean, it's silly if you think about that. And even during the election time, who was still president at the time? Trump was still the president on January the 6th. He, had, he was still officially the president. So who's all of this other stuff and, and all of this, this mysterious and these other people? And I'm going to add or throw a verse in there. I can't think of it. It's in Proverbs. As, I think it's in Proverbs as well, where it says the wicked flee. When no one's pursuing them. That's why a lot of these people that you, these preachers, false prophets, all of them, they're always suspicious. They're always, their conscience ain't right. That's why they're always worried and looking over their shoulders and all of that. Because they are living in deception and a lie. And they're, and they're, and they're fleeing. Ain't no one pursuing them. They seeing things, talking to things. Oh, they're all over the place. But well, that's a whole nother message. So number two, shows bad judgment. A pastor, you ain't going to be perfect, but you can't be sitting up there. But you had no business at the Capitol on January the 6th. And number three, I have on here, which is the saddest part to me, because though he has this church that's getting ready to open and big ideas, it would be great. All the ideas he have would be great. It would be so great if he himself was in where he needs to be spiritually, but he's not. He's teaching false doctrine. He's teaching things that he, he he's, uh, he's uh, needs some counseling because he's broken in many areas to where he lashes out with other people uh, 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 because they he, he don't want to be corrected in any kind of way. He don't want to listen to anyone. He thinks he knows everything and all of that, which brings me to another point before I get to this third point, which breaks my heart. I, 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 from what I've seen with his, from the news articles and all of that, from when the military and we know that a soldier drowned and they, I don't, I, somehow with, with a baptism, but he was, I don't know the real, the, the true truth of all of it. But I do know he was in an unrestricted area. So he was not listening and taking orders like he was supposed to. 
He was in an unrestricted error, which tells me he does not listen, that he's hard headed. And it shows as he's a pastor, as he's trying to be a leader. It shows in that form that he this is why. He, so so if he ain't going to listen and he's wearing the cunt our uniform, the uniform for the United States, for, for the military representing his country and you don't listen to your superiors and all of that. And then you get on your own and out here trying to do ministry and you ain't feel like you ain't got to answer to nobody. But you know what? You will have to answer to one person. And anybody that's listening and following this guy, you better get, you better check your, do an inner self check. Cause on the number three, the most heartbreaking thing is for me is the children. Children and newbies. Some of you people have been following them from the get go. You're going to be hard headed. You're going to continue to do what you want to do and all of that. That's fine. You, you, you're going to pay the price for, in the end for it, as you see. Because you're not going to grow spiritually the way you need to be under this type of teaching. You're not going to grow. And that's the problem. Because unfortunately, I was thinking of these children. They're going to be like little nationalists. The mindset of this na this nationalist mindset that, that, that we just got to, I'm so angry at society and, and all of this. So I'm just going to start believing all kinds of lies. I'm going to believe that kids are being eaten and, and, and that all of these uh, conspiracy theories and, and that there's uh, body doubles everywhere and, and, and all of these, you know, that, the, that, that, that there's this big, everyone's the antichrist that's another thing everyone's the antichrist i'm gonna teach that and i'm gonna raise up a generation of kids and have them with that mindset i'm gonna uh, take these newbies that somebody that was searching and came out and got their lives right and trying to get their lives back on track and i'm gonna take these people like that and i'm gonna take them under my care and i'm gonna teach them that if you don't speak in tongues something's wrong if you don't, if, if you didn't get baptized right, something's wrong. Or if you didn't get baptized at all, it's, 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 you're in trouble. I'm going to teach work-based theology. I'm going to teach certain things that doesn't line up with the scriptures. And then I'm going to vent, vent, vent and get in arguments with other false prophets. And we latching at each other. And I just thought of that as I close, because I, I what I have in here. Um, yeah. As I, I was thinking of King Jehoshaphat, where the Ammonites and all of them were wanting to come against him and they were going to kill him. And he called a fast and he, he, you know, he was scared and called this fast. And the Lord told him, let's pray. I want everyone to, you know, he told the people we're going to fast and pray. And then when they went forth with the choir in the front, they didn't have to fight the battle. The Ammonites and all of their, 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 their enemies, they killed each other, destroyed each other in the end. And that's where the Lord said that he fights our battles. We get out of the way and he'll fight the battle. And that's what he's doing with all of these false prophets and teachers and people that ain't got no business calling themselves messengers for him. They're all in disarray and all of that. And in the end, they're going to destroy each other and destroy those that have that they've captured and bought into their web. And will it be you? Because unfortunately, don't get caught up in the glitz and glamour and all of this stuff because buildings and all of these little things that because it sounds good. Don't get caught up in all of that. Yes, I'm angry just as angry about society, about all of the stuff that you, that they, you know, that they will say that is only on the left. The left has got good qualities too, certain things. They, they're concerned about the poor. They're concerned about uh, elderly, social security, all of these certain things. And then you got the right. They got some good ideas, you know, believing in life and solid and, and, and uh, uh, you know, many other things. Government trying to get out of the way. And, you know, there's other things. There's good and bad on both sides. But you're not going to try to pull this that the devil is just only on the left side of things. There's good on both certain areas. You can pluck out good on that, but don't allow the political stuff to get you off track spiritually to where you start believing lies from a leader that has fallen into the hands of the devil and, uh, and, and, and people that are working for him. And you start promoting lies and, and, and believing this junk and all of this and get off base and start teaching spiritual messages 
because of it, that don't line up with the scriptures. That's what's happening. People that got so upset about finances, food, the genders of uh, relationships of stuff and all of this. And they act like they're, they're being so, and this is the other thing, we're so persecuted for our religion. I haven't seen, I've yet to see uh, one Christian beheaded or taken out to the street and gunned down for professing Christ here in America. Have you seen it? If you've seen it, let me know if you know something about it. But we don't, our lives are not on the line for professing the gospel as some of these people try to make it as if we are this oh, total, I mean, run for your cover. Duck and dodge because there's so much, you know, it's all over. No, it's not. We serve a great God. You stand up for what you believe in, that's fine. But don't stand up and mix the lies into it because you want to get what you believe in pushed further and your agenda out. Stop it. We don't want to do that. We want to have and give glory to God. We want to conduct ourselves with integrity, which makes me, I'm going to make another message again about integrity. Integrity is important, and especially as a pastor. So that there's more I could say about this, but he should not, he's not ready he should not be no pastor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if uh, make disappoint some people. This is the type of leadership you do not want to sit under because you're not going to grow. Maybe you got saved by listening to him and talking about the gospel message and all that. That's fine. Now it's time to get some meat and move on because this type of hoopla and all of this kind of stuff is not going to do anything but keep you stagnant and keep you outside of God's will, and it's going to make you angry. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself angry because you're going to find out. I already see people not getting answers to certain questions like, man, teach the Bible, teach this, this, that, all of these things. But you're not getting it, and you're not going to get it because he needs to grow up, point blank. So I don't care, get mad or however. I say it in love. I don't want to see nobody destroyed. And most of all, I don't want to see these, no babies being brainwashed from the get-go because somebody is unlearned standing behind a pulpit. So that's all I have for today. Evangelism for God is the channel where we talk about issues the church went away from. What else do we do? Punch Satan right in between the chops. Uh, if you're new, consider subscribing, hit like, coming along for the journey into the next video. Maurice Braxton, take care. God bless.